Hello everybody, so this is the third and final installation of the gym upgrade. The cable cross system is complete. Titan finally had their sale, so I was able to get a couple of extra pieces to finish off the gym. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how the cable cross came together, give you a few tricks and tips based on things that I've learned along the way. And I'm very happy with this cable cross system. It's not as convenient and fast and easy to use as a club cable cross system, but those are just so expensive. Now, Weeder makes one, the Weeder Home Cable Cross Pro or something like that. It's on sale at Sears for a little over $500, but it's very small. And I wanted a legit cable cross system where the cables would originate from a substantial distance away from the person doing the exercises. So let's take a look at what I've added. Up here I've got these Titan support bars going across where the chin-up bars used to be. And right there, that thing with the red handle, is a shackle. Now, the shackle doesn't come with the red handles. What it comes with are bolts. But I wanted to be able to move these things and put them up and down easily. So I'm going to show you what I did. I got these handles. Those are the original ones from my monoliths. The monoliths come with little red handles. But I replaced those with 4-inch hitch pin handles from Tractor Supply. And that's all these things are, is four inch uh, hitch pin handles. They're a little thicker on the Titan one, so I'm gonna use those on the shackles, but you can go to Tractor Supply and buy red handled hitch pin things just like this. On the other side is a cotter pin. And the ones from Titan come with that little wire to keep the cotter pin with the handle. Ones I bought from Tractor Supply, I just got a little bit of very thin wire from Lowe's and then swaged, swaged it on so that it would hold the little cotter pin onto things and you buy the cotter pins at Tractor Supply too. The hitch pin handles, this red handle that I'm using to hold the shackle up at Tractor Supply are very inexpensive, like in the neighborhood of maybe $6. So let me show you how easy it is to put these on or take them off. All right, so here we've got the bar. This is my shackle that came from Titan. Again, it comes with a bolt. I'm going to use this hitch pin handle instead. You can use one from the monolift attachments from Titan or you can go to Tractor Supply by 4 inch hitch pins. Little cotter pin, so I'm going to undo the cotter pin. Okay, so I'll put this right here. Put this red handle through. Boom, there we go. It's in. Clip this in. And now it's on. Okay, so the only thing I'm missing now are some pulleys. So I've experimented with various types of pulleys. These are climbers, rescue pulleys, and they're really convenient because you just flip them like this, and then you can put your cable in and close them up, then hook them up with a carabiner. The trouble is, uh, these two and this one, they're fixed, right? So let me see, make sure I got good video of all this. So these are fixed, which means they don't twist. So once you put the carabiner in, it'll twist just a little bit based on how the carabiner can twist. But if it's not at a good angle, it won't work. I may use these for various things. These are kind of smooth. Although honestly, these national hardware, these cheap things you get at a hardware store or a tractor supply, I feel like these are very smooth. They roll very well. All right, this guy, the one with the top that spins, this is the kind that I like to use. So I would say start with this. Amazon has these uh, through some guy, Grazies or Razzies or something. One of the Amazon sellers will sell you six of them for, I don't know, $60, something, 10 bucks each. Tractor Supply, I think the regular price is like $8 each for these if you've got a Tractor Supply that has them in stock. So in order to put the cable into this pulley, you pull this pin. Push that retaining pin out, and then there's the pulley. Put the cable in, make sure you've got a stopper on each side of the cable. Put this thing in there. Put in your pin. Again, for some reason they have a little dent that you have to rotate this until it fits in. Mine's in the dent now. Flip it over, put this pin in, and it's ready to go. All right, once we've got our pulley ready to go, just 
hang it from the carabiner. And there we go. So now this is hung. I've got one pulley ready to go. So to set this thing up for a basic cable fly, I moved the location of this. Again, very easy to do with these hitch pins. One there and one there so they'd be kind of at opposite angles so that I could stretch my arms out a little bit. So I just made it a little bit cockeyed and gave myself a few more inches here. And then I'm set up now for a basic cable fly. All right, so that's one exercise, but what if you don't want to go to all that trouble just to do one exercise? There's plenty of other exercises that you probably want to do with cables. If you want to do that, you need to position a second pulley. So in some other videos, I've showed you like a low row. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. But to do that, what I wanted to do was to be able to position a second pulley anywhere on this support where there are holes or on any of the supports where there are holes the thing is that this is wide, right? I've got the T3, which is like the Rogue R3. Three inches this way and only two inches this way. Those shackles are built to fit on a two inch bar. Can't see the shackle, there you go. Those shackles are built to fit on a two inch bar. So what I did was I ordered the one for the next larger size cage. So I'd have a three inch shackle. So it's this one, the big one. So it's a big old shackle. So I'll go ahead and position this on the bar and show you how we can go ahead and change our exercises up using these. Here I've arranged these for a low to high cable fly, like an upper chest fly. So pulley is there. Go down there, I put the shackle with the pulley and then a handle, and then just did the same thing on the other side, and this lets me do low to high chest flies. For seated rows, you would just use the same setup, change the attachment on it, make sure you're a distance away, then you can do your seated rows. Now here's where a little problem solving comes in. I've set these things to medium height so the pulleys are here for like a medium fly, okay? So here's the trouble. Now the cables are too long. And this is something I don't like with the spud ink system. The cable they give you is ridiculously long and it dictates the angle at which you have to do every exercise. But here, too, <laughs> too long. So um, I can do a couple of different things here. One is I can make shorter cables, obviously, but there's a hack that I'm gonna show you that is really inexpensive. In fact, you don't even really need to buy shackles. You can just do this hack instead of buying the shackles. Now, I like the shackles because they're so fast to move up and down and I feel like they're sturdier, more substantial, but you don't have to have shackles. I'll show you what else you can use instead. These straps on Amazon are crazy cheap. These orange ones, I think, were six for five or six dollars, and these big, thicker blue ones were six for, I think, um, maybe six or seven dollars. These are rated to 3,600 pounds bursting, and then these are rated to 10,000 pounds, so they can handle probably as much weight as you're gonna do in your home gym. So you wanna be able to attach them here and then you can put pulleys on these. Difficulty is they'll slide up and down. So how do you keep them from sliding up and down? Well, you probably got some band pegs when you got your rack. So I'll show you. I've got four of them that I got with my very first rack. So I want to shorten up this cable and see if I can do it over here because you'll be able to see it better. So what I really want is have a pulley that's over here. So I'll do this and then put one of the blue guys here. Either one's fine. Then I can attach another pulley here. So I'll set this up on the other side. So I put that there and then grab a couple of pulleys. So what I did here Got the weight going up to there, down to the shackle here, and then over to um, the uh, band pegs that are hooked up to 
the nylon strap that is hooked up to the last pulley. Now, I'll talk a little bit about pulleys. This does not reduce the amount of weight you're lifting. So we'll talk a little bit about the physics in just a minute. Ooh, that's a dark picture. You guys can get the idea though. So, here I am. So for the middle level, uh, here we go. So that's it. You can see that really you're only limited by your imagination as far as how this goes. Now, you will probably have to have several different lengths of cable, so I don't know, you'll either have to make some. I find that most of what I do though, you can get by with two cables that are about six feet long each on per side, so a total of four. Cables that are about six feet long, but having different custom lengths will help you. Having different pulleys will help you. What I find is that when in doubt, go with a shorter cable, not longer. Cables get too long and then you can't, you have to like back way the heck away from the pulley and stuff like that. So um, as far as using the straps, I did another video where I showed how to use straps to kind of simulate a spud ink system and that system's all done with straps. There's no shackles in it at all. So I did say that this does not reduce the amount of weight you do. If you just redirect the force in a, a pulley system, that doesn't lower the amount of weight that is in the system. Let me show you what does reduce the weight though, in case you're tempted to try something like this. Okay, so here I've got weight and then a cable going up to a pulley, then to another pulley, then to another pulley. All this does is redirect the force. It does not lessen the load. Where you will actually lessen the amount of load is with something called a block and, and tackle system. So for that to happen, what you have to do is put uh, another pulley down on the load itself. Okay, so here's our simple physics lesson for the day because bodybuilders and weightlifting people are experts on application of force. I've got this pulley set up up top here, right up there. So, and I've got a weight, I've got a 10 pound weight plus the weight of the, um, of the, the pin. So if I apply 10 pounds plus of force, it'll cause this to go in the air, right? So I've applied 10 pounds of force and now this weight is traveling up and down. So if, <coughs> so if I go and get another uh, pin, loading pin, so this is another loading pin that's got 10 pounds on it as well. So if I... Put this thing on here. Actually, I might need another. But you can see that it just moves up and down very easily because there's an equal amount of weight on both sides. So I'm going to add one more pulley up top so these things don't bump into each other. Okay, so I added a second pulley and all we're doing here is redirecting force. So again, we've got our little 10 pound load there goes up here, over here, and over here, and so I'm going to attach a weight to this guy. Alright, so here's our load. We want to apply 10 pounds of force here in order to make our load go up in the air, because, you know, we want to... <laughs> uh, anyway, I was going to make a load joke, but I'll pass. Alright, so here we go. We apply force, and now you can see that if we apply a little bit more than 10 pounds of force here to this little bit more of 10 pound load, it doesn't matter that we redirected this. Okay, so uh, as long as you're just redirecting this, you can use as many pulleys as you want. It doesn't change the amount of weight you're lifting. But what if we wanted to make this load even lighter? All right, so how would we do that? What I've done here is taken our 10 pound weight and then put a pulley on it. We're gonna create a block and pulley system. So it's going up here and then just terminating here and then we've got the 10 pound weight and then it's going up to another pulley that redirects just to get it out of the way and then comes down. Now, in the old way we did this, if we put an equal 10 pound with a loading pin on the other end of the cable, they equaled each other out. But let's see what happens now. Okay, so this 10 pounds is pulling this guy up. How much weight is it going to take to move this guy up? Here's what's going on in physics. All right, the old way this was, was we had 10 pounds of force that traveled through the pulleys, right? 10, 10 pounds of force. So to get this to move up, we need to apply 10 pounds of force here to pull it up. Now, because we have a pulley on the load itself, there's 10 pounds of force here and 10 pounds of force here. 
So it cuts the weight of this in half. That's what the purpose of that pulley is. So uh, instead of a 10 pound weight on here, I should be able to put a five pound weight and it should still be able to pull that load up. So let me grab a five pounder. All right, so here's a five. So I put the five pound on there and that is, I've got some friction because of the golf ball and things like that. But now this five pounder, the loading pin is obviously a rounding error, but the five pounder is basically doing the work. So uh, we've reduced our 10 pound load to five. Okay, and again, the loading pins add a little bit of weight here and there, but you can see that this is, this five pounds is basically equivalent to 10 pounds there. So long explanation, but letting you know exactly why. Don't worry, if you redirect this force a bazillion times, you're fine. You're just redirecting force. So however much weight you have on here is how much weight you're directing until you put a pulley on the load. If you put a pulley on the load, then you reduce the uh, amount of force required to move the load by half. And it keeps working. Like you can add more pulleys onto the load, more pulleys above it, and keep looping it around and around and around. That's called a block and tackle system. It's how like old sailing ships, the sailors were able to pull up really heavy sails and things like that. Probably how they built the pyramids. So it's a really powerful tool. But that's your physics lesson for today. But have no fear that you're somehow doing less work. Uh, the only way you do less work is if you have a pulley on the load. Okay, so that's it. My gym upgrade's complete. I've got a cable cross system now. Uh, it's not cheap. <laughs> I added a whole second rack, basically just to do the cable cross. And I still feel like it's cheaper than buying a cable cross system. Again, you can get that weeder one that I think the full price is 700-ish. Sears has them for a little over 500. But I feel like this is better. That weeder one's very close together. So only limitations here are your creativity in terms of finding attaching points on these frames to stick your shackles to or to wrap straps around and to put uh, pulleys on. So you can get any angle you want to hit any muscle group and you just have to think about it a little bit and you can apply force in any direction you want with cable. So, so good luck everybody. Have a great workout and we'll see you soon.